Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Apologies for the little time switch. Um, have a number of things happening. And so I was like, you know what? I have this peace and moment uh, and in time. And uh, I think I'm just gonna pop on and see what everyone's up to. <laughs> so I appreciate your flexibility and uh, your patience. And I'm just eager to get to this project because it's so fun, easy to put together and it celebrates all the colors. And how could you not love that, right? Um, my name is Neelay Patel. For those of you that are new to the Silver Silk channel, personally want to welcome you. Um, I am the owner, designer, and educator here for the company Silver Silk and More. I do everything from creating the product to shipping it, um, packaging, uh, communicating with you guys out there, letting you guys know about the new, fun, cool projects that is happening behind the scenes and um, just all the things that you could possibly do for having a small business. So um, it's nice to meet you and I'm glad you could join in for this video. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna say some hellos to people that have tuned in at the last second. Miss Sarah is here. Hi, Sarah, over from YouTube and a Silver Silk patron. <laughs> Appreciate um, your support as always and you are such a sweetheart and thank you so much for joining in. Miss Bess is here from Florida. Um, hopefully the weather has been great there. I know the last time I was there, it was off and on patchy with rain and stuff, but I feel like it's always that way, right? <laughs> Miss Teresa and Greta are in the house. Um, how are you ladies doing? Love you guys so much. Thank you for being the best Silky ambassadors ever. Um, Miss Stephanie is here. This is a live video, so I apologize. Usually these are pre-recorded, um, but I kind of want to hang out with you guys and, you know, just spend some time with, with my friends out there. Um, quick hello to Miss Vivian. Um, she, says she should be out walking like Miss Sally is as uh, well. I think she's walking her dog. So she's tuning in and listening to us. Oh, hi, Suzanne. Um, Susan, sorry. Miss Susan, I am very impressed with the projects that you are coming up to teach classes for. Um, your ability to put colors together is just phenomenal. And you are so talented. And I truly appreciate working with you on um, some of the silver silk stuff that we do. Uh, so, oh, Deb is also in the house. Hi, Deb. Good to see you. Um, if anyone else is interested in joining in, please let your friends know while we're here live. Otherwise, I'm gonna just go ahead and start talking about the project. Um, this is the rainbow bracelet kit. And now this is a tutorial video. If you purchase the kit, you will have received a set of digital instructions to assemble everything. And so I wanted to supplement that with an actual tutorial video. Um, we all learn different ways. I certainly do as well. I'm more of a hands-on learner and I don't read as much <laughs> as I probably should. And that's okay. Um, my job is to take all of those different bits of information and reinterpret it to make it easier for you guys to figure out um, the different techniques and to learn more efficiently. Silver Silk is such a fun product. It's used in so many different ways. And it's just, it would be such a shame to not be able to um, relay the different types of educational ways that I could possibly come up with to get to um, have you guys use it and be more comfortable with it. So um, this is Chainmail on Silver Silk. This is a quick little, I don't know if it's a new technique that I invented, certainly with Silver Silk it is, but I think this is probably a chain that is already repurposed and used in Chainmail um, traditionally. And what I did was I sort of reinterpreted how to recreate uh, an, an end cap essentially for the Silver Silk ends. It's just a nice tidy way to clean it up. Um, still looks really highly textural and very cool. Um, gives a slight Renaissance touch to it, I think. Um, and it's a great way to be cost efficient as well. Um, I know my end caps aren't necessarily the least expensive, but you do get what you pay for with those. Um, they are very high quality, but you know, once you start putting 12 end caps on something, the price for that bracelet kind of gets bumped up if you're trying to resell it. So this is an opportunity to um, use a technique that is just different, a different method for making an end cap. Um, I'm gonna flash a picture of the project that we're gonna be making. And it's, I'm saying, show your colors, a rainbow bracelet. And it's got this really fun, sparkly uh, magnetic clasp at the end. So what I'm gonna do is pen straight back down to my camera here. 
And um, I'm just gonna kind of take this step, step by step at a time, um, starting with the tools. So here we've got a pair of, well, two pairs of chain nose pliers. One is bent and one is just straight on. Uh, my favorite tool company is Wubbers. I really love their tools. I'm such a snob about having consistent and high quality pliers and having them all look the same. Um, and Wubbers has just a really great line of tools that I enjoy using and they are um, very high quality. So love these guys, have a pair of those. Um, and if you don't have Wubbers tools, you know, some standard chain nose pliers, preferably without the teeth, um, they should just be flat on the inside, um, are perfect to work with. I've got my pair of cutters from Lindstrom, had these for, oh, I've got, I've had these for about 10 years now, I think. Um, it's a little crazy how long I've had them and how many things I've cut them with <laughs> and all the bad stuff that I've cut it with and uh, still remains sharp to this day. Um, and that's really just to cut the silver silk if you need to, we'll get into that a little bit later. You'll also need some either 24 or 26 gauge wire and this is to make a needle. Um, I'm gonna cover A to Z how to make the end caps um, with the chain mail technique from scratch. And so if you've received a previous kit of chain mail, some of these techniques may be familiar. And if you've not, um, this is going to be a very special treat for you. So I just have a little scrap of 26 gauge wire. This is just in copper. Color doesn't really matter as long as it's just a thin piece of wire. You can also use a string and needle if you wanted, um, but I feel like the wire just is the easiest to work with. So I'll have that up to the side. Um, as far as the materials goes, you will need some five millimeter jump rings. I've got about nine grams of this. Um, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make an end cap on each end of the silver silk and then bringing it all together. Um, so the tutorial won't take too long because uh, we're just gonna focus on the end caps and making those as perfect as possible. So um, all I'm trying to say is that you'll need nine grams. <laughs> focus, Neela, focus. Um, actually, these are the five millimeter jump rings they are a little bit bigger. And then these are the four millimeter ones, so which are slightly smaller. Um, I did note that the five millimeter and four millimeter are for the inner diameter of the jump ring. So the outer diameter might be a little bit bigger. Um, and also the jump ring gauge is uh, close to one millimeter. So if we're really thinking about it, it's probably about a 20 gauge wire. Um, that's used to create these jump rings. They are copper interior or copper core, and they've been plated with silver color that is tarnish resistant. Um, they will tarnish because it's not tarnish proof, but it will take some time because they are resistant. Um, so I highly recommend as far as storage goes for anything that is of silver silk or you know metals is to um, store it away in a Ziploc bag after you're done wearing it, you will get the most life out of it that you will have ever received for a piece of jewelry. Um, you can bathe with silver silk or shower or whatever, put it in water, go to a pool. Um, but it does, I guess, um, it does shorten the time of the tarnishing process that happens. And tarnishing is just a natural occurrence. There's really no way to um, avoid it, um, but just, Letting you know some tips and tricks out there. Uh, what else do I have on my list? Some capture chain. Oh, let's look at these colors. Oh gosh, gotta have the rainbow. Let's see if I can put them in the right order here because I always, I, I can't remember <laughs> how it goes. I think it goes purple, green, blue, gold. No, wait, I already got it wrong. I know the reds and I know the warm colors. <laughs> it's like the transition here. I think it goes green, blue. Per okay, that's it. So purple, blue, green. Um, it's typically yellow, but here we're using gold. And I've got an orange and a red. Now, how gorgeous does that look? I mean, come on, guys. So beautiful, right? Um, we're going to be using these. And I have got about a seven inch length. This is one of those things that you guys need to measure on your wrist first before getting started because the clasp 
and the jump rings, once we start making those end caps, it's going to add on probably about an inch to an inch and a quarter extra. So if you need a cutaway a little bit, you can. One thing to also consider is that this is going to be bunched up together. So it's going to create a little bit of extra bulk. You're going to need some extra length to be able to compensate for that bulk around your wrist. Um, and so you might want to leave it at the seven inch and go ahead and assemble like one side of it as I have here and then measure it around your wrist and then do your cutting and assembling on the other side. To me, that's probably the most straightforward way to go about this. Um, and if you think that the seven inch length is perfect, by all means, you can go ahead and assemble everything and do it all at once. I will say whenever the first time I made this design, um, I had the length incorrect because <laughs> my bracelet was a little too big. So I had to unchain mail everything on one side, trim it, and then go back and redo everything to get it to that perfect size. So um, just something to consider whenever you're, you're constructing all of this. Um, if you did receive the pre-order, you'll have received an extra color, which was sort of a light peridot green, and you can add that to this bracelet as well, um, just for some fun and some extra colors, because extra colors are never a bad thing. Um, I'm going to just pan through my comments real quick. Uh, oh, Marianne is here. Hi, Marianne. Morning um, from Arizona. Yes, got back midnight last night. My best way to start the day with you live. Oh, you are such a sweetheart, my friend. I'm so glad I could join, uh, have you join in at the last second here. Um, oh, Miss Gail is on. Hi, Gail. Always love seeing your name here. Um, let's see. Oh, we've got Miss Deb Johnson. I believe... Um, she had a comment as well. I'm watching and switching back and forth from devices. Yeah, Wi-Fi be like that, isn't it? <laughs> a little crazy. Um, hopefully it's coming in pretty pretty clear on, on the other side here. Hi, Christine from Pittsburgh. All right, let's continue on our tutorial. This is the first thing that we're going to do. I'm going to just grab a color to work with here, and I've got my gold. And... We got to make a needle on one side, um, just like the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim up one end and get it nice and flush with the ball core chain. This is, I should probably talk about what this is. <laughs> For those of you that are new to Silver Silk, um, this is called capture chain. What makes it the capture chain is that there is a ball, ball chain core inside of the knitted wire. It takes six needles to create essentially a knitted sock that is drawn over a ball chain core. Um, if you think of a fan pulley and that little beaded ball chain that's on it, well, that's essentially the core of this. And when you get the measurement of the ball chain core plus the knitted wire, it's about 2.8 millimeters in diameter. So it's a pretty good, robust little chain. It's super intricate. It is made with non uh, excuse me, with tarnish resistant wire. Um, and it's as thin as human hair and um, just really adds this great metallic flexible sheen and finish to the chain here. Um, I think this is a phenomenal product. It's got some great weight to it and structure. If you're really making um, some robust designs, this is the way to go. I love it for this project. I think it just gives a little bit of weight and structure to the bracelet as well and um, comes in a ton of different colors. So you can really get crazy with this stuff. And if you wanted to match your bracelet with your earrings, um, believe me, I won't stop you from shopping <laughs> on silversilkonline.com, but you can use the same techniques to create a longer necklace design and it would be perfect. So you will need that. And uh, again, I just kind of cut the, the, te the, excuse me, the end of my silver silk here um, flush with the ball chain and it's ready to have my wire strung right through it. So I'm going to grab that little piece of wire that I cut earlier and I'm just going to string it right through the knitted portion. And I usually just go about a bead down as you can see. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of, I don't even have to twist it at the end. I can just kind of make sure they're paired together as such. And this is going to help me 
with my um, chain mail as soon as I start to add it in. So let's get started with the actual chain mail. I need to create a little link. Let's see, I need to find number two here. There we are. <laughs> I need to create this little link, which consists of four size five millimeter jump rings. Okay, I'm gonna grab one. Ah, I have some questions as I'm uh, I'm seeing some great beat extravaganza questions. So you guys just hang tight with me for a few minutes and um, I will answer that because yes, there is a kit for TGBE and, that I'm going to release and I, I'm so excited about it, but I'll share it a little bit later. All right, I'm gonna grab my five millimeter jump ring and I'm going to grab my two chain nose pliers and I'm just gonna open it up. The way to open up this chain, uh, this link, sorry, is to pull one toward me, one end, and one end away from me. So you're pulling essentially um, opposite of each other and not outward. Okay, so it should look like that. These uh, chain mail jump rings, by the way, are from We've Got Mail. Love this company. It is a um, fantastic product. They really do care about the quality and their, um, their metals that they use. So anyways, I just thought I'd give you, share with you guys the source of this. And it is a woman-owned company uh, or women-owned company. And uh, I fully support all the things. So um, I love them. Love them pieces. Glad I could use them for this kit. All right. A little side note there for you. Anyway, with two of the jump rings, I'm going to close them shut and make sure that that... Um, I believe that's called the key if I'm getting my terminology right, that it is closed, that the jump ring is completely seamless there. I probably have that terminology wrong, so I should just, I should just not say anything. <laughs> um, we'll just say that the jump ring needs to be closed. I need my chainmail people here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to string both of those on to my open jump ring as such. And I'm going to close that back up. Okay, I'm gonna set that back down and I'm going to open up my fourth jump ring as I did earlier. Okay, I will grab my little series of rings there and I'm going to go ahead and string my jump ring right through those other two that from earlier. Okay, and I'll go ahead and close it again. Uh, hi, Marie. Got my friend over from Facebook um, that is tuning in. So um, as you can see with the picture, I've got now two jump rings attached between um, two, one single jump ring on each side. So time for the next step. There we go. So the idea here is to take our needle and to string it between those two jump rings. We're just gonna sandwich that right in between. This can be a little tricky, um, but once you get it through, that's when all the magic will happen because then you just slide it right over your silver silk. Boom. Should look like that. Okay. So time for the next step. I just leave my needle on until the very end. And then um, once I'm kind of done with the one side, I'll just string it off and um, kind of just do the same thing on the other side. I'll show you guys what I mean as we're continuing on our project. Okay, let's hope this is step five. Yep, okay. So what I need to do now is continue making the body of my end cap. So I'm going to string on two more or rather attach two more five millimeter jump rings. So let me grab those and I'm going to go ahead and do myself a favor and open them up and get them ready for me. So again, pull one toward you, pull one away, just like that. And I'll do that to both jump rings. Okay, easy peasy. What I'm gonna do is grab my silver silk I'm going to string through the top two 
jump rings there, just like that. Yeah, I'll just show it off for a hot second here. And I'm gonna close it right back up. Now, after you do this first one, it's starting to get a little tighter and you'll notice that your chain is not moving. So really what you wanna do is whenever you have this first set on, after you strung it through the needle, you'll wanna position this exactly where you want it because as you start to add on jump rings, it's gonna get more and more um, difficult and uh, to move and more stable um, for the jump rings to be attached onto the silver silk. So that's why this technique works so well is because those jump rings sort of grapple on to the ball chain core and it prevents it from slipping and moving. Pretty fun, um, especially whenever I had put these jump rings together on the, for the first time, I was like, wow, this is really going to change the landscape of silver silk and chain mail um, to a whole new level and bring it to a whole new level. Um, so there it is. That's all six of my five millimeter jump rings attached together. Isn't that just gorgeous? So now, let's see if I've got my next overlay here. This is what it'll look like. Easy peasy. Okay. The next step is to attach our four millimeter jump rings. The reason is, is this just kind of, um, it caps off the jump rings pretty well. It sort of scales it down, so it tapers it. And also it'll provide an even stronger hold onto the capture chain. So this step is pretty critical. I'm going to start with the bottom side first. I'm going to grab two four millimeter jump rings, and we're just gonna basically do the same exact thing all over again. I'm gonna open these things up, these things, these jump rings. <laughs> I should have more respect for these awesome jump rings. I think partly I'm distracted because I'm trying to read some of these amazing comments that you guys are leaving as well. And again, I do appreciate you joining in at the last second. So glad we got to hang out this morning, have a cup of coffee together, do some beating, chit chat. These are all of my love languages. Okay. I'll go ahead and secure that right down there. So that's my first one. Do you see how the sizing is a little bit different? We went from a bigger jump ring to slightly smaller. Um, four millimeter inner diameter is about all you can go to really taper it down. I've tried smaller jump rings, but with less successful results. So I recommend sticking to the four millimeter um, as does the pattern. So I'm gonna flip this over. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect my four millimeter jump rings to my five millimeter ones as such, and bring those two ends together with my chain nose pliers. Now, I'll tell you that this jump ring is not, or excuse me, this chain mill is not going anywhere. It has got the most tight hold on to the silver silk. So there we are. If I had to compare it to the photo, that's what it looks like. Alrighty, I'm gonna move on to the next step here. Um, the next step is to trim my silver silk. You might have a little bit sticking out there, um, which is again, why I would wait to cut it after you've assembled everything on one side and then you can kind of measure and cut the other side. Um, let's see, grab my cutters here. Hopefully I don't cut my craft wire. I didn't, no I did, just kidding. No I didn't, ah, oh. or did I? No I didn't, oh, okay. <laughs> um, you never know with me. I could have just almost grabbed the wrong thing, right? Okay, we'll save that um, for later. So we have chopped off our silver silk. Sometimes there's a little um, bit of wire fuzzies is what I call them at the end. They're just little wire remnant pieces that are there whenever you cut the silver silk, as you can see. So I just tend to knock those off with my, um, either my chain nose pliers or with a beading awl is also helpful. Um, but once you have that flush cut, you're good to go, right? Now it's time to add on our 
second set of four millimeter jump rings to the ends there. This is going to really taper off the ends and just make it nice and clean. So back to the steps before, I'm gonna grab my four millimeter chain uh, jump rings and open them up. Okay, there we go, as you can see, opened them up. And I am going to string that right through. the five millimeter jump rings. Just like that. So there's one end. And you'll notice that it wants to start to kind of tilt toward the center there, as you can see. And that's good. That's what you want it to do. That's what's gonna give you your tapered end. So let's do that to the other side now. What I also do is I use my fingers to kind of squeeze the last two five millimeter jump rings together. And that's what makes it easier for me to string all this together or attach it together, I guess. Forget what materials here I'm working with. Now I did have a little bead pop out of the ball chain. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just try and trim that off, make it easier on myself. If that happens to you, like it does here, just trim it off you'll be thanking yourself for doing that. And it's not going to cause anything to come apart. As you can see, I'm pulling on this pretty hard and uh, it's still, still intact. So there it is. Easy peasy. Okay. Let's proceed to the next step. So now you can grab a four millimeter jump ring and just bring those other two jump rings together. just like that. Now imagine taking this technique to another level. You can add on all kinds of beads to this. You can add on some other type of jewelry chain. You can um, try and knot some leather on it. This is essentially a uh, chainmail end cap that you know works great for silver silk. Um, it does add a different style to your design, I suppose. It's not as clean um, as a finishing up like my traditional single strand end caps are, but um, it's just a different flavor. And, you know, there's so many possibilities to designing with it. Um, and so I truly do enjoy this technique. Uh, so let's, let's do the other side and let's go a little faster this time, right? So I'm going to go back through and trim some of the beads off my ball chain there get this nice and flush. Now that I have the one side completed, I can go through and measure and trim, whoops, as I need to. Um, I feel like this is probably sufficient for my wrist, so I'm not actually going to trim any of this. And um, I'm gonna work with what I've got. So I'm gonna grab four five millimeter jump rings, just the same as before. I'm going to make sure two are open, one, Two, and that the two are closed. One. I feel like a robot having these hands. <laughs> uh, I gotta giggle about it. Um, yeah, just like, I guess that's, that's what it is. That's what I feel like right now is it's just robot hands. All right. So I'm gonna, grab, <laughs> I'm gonna grab my open jump ring and I'm going to string on the two closed jump rings. Okay, and I'm gonna close that right back up. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same to the other end here, I'll just grab those, make sure that both of these two jump rings are attached as such. OK, 
Okay. You can use your fingers too if you want to. Um, I know that some folks have some sort of like uh, sensitivity to touching or bending things. And so the pliers are super helpful for that. Um, I'm going to string my copper wire. This is the 26 gauge wire and just make myself a little needle as before. We'll just proceed back up to this step here. And I'm going to string through my two jump rings. Okay, here we go. Once I drop it, it should just go ahead and nicely fit right over the silver silk. I think it was caught on a little piece of wire there. So we're just going to scooch that over. And now I'm ready to create the other jump ring or to attach the other jump rings to create my end cap. So I'm going to grab two five millimeter jump rings and I'm going to go ahead and open them up. Okay, just like that. Um, here is what you guys need to pay attention to for this next step though. Since we have one end finished already, you'll wanna make sure that you lay it on your table. Okay, what we wanna do is match that up to this side. So you see how this is at an angle and this is not? Whoops, let's try that again. <laughs> you see how this is at uh, not an angle and this is at a slight angle? I wanna fix this side so that it's facing the same direction as this. So what I'll do is I'll just slightly twist this to make sure that it's going to stay um, jump ring top up on both sides and then carefully making sure that I connect my other two five millimeter jump rings on the right in the right space here. So I'm going to carefully turn it as such, making sure that stuff is still aligned and where I want it. I'm going to scooch this up just a little bit and then I'll carefully pick it up and I'll use the table to my advantage and just make sure everything is stable with it. And um, then I can kind of close it. Once I get that first jump ring in on that other end, it should be sort of stiff enough to kind of work with and move about as you need to. Once I get the second jump ring on, that's the real deal. That's when you know it's not gonna shift anywhere. There we go. So just be careful about the alignment. Um, these are so close together that having them topsy-turvy, I think would just be a little bit obvious and um, would it wouldn't mess up your design. It would just be a little detail that you'd missed out on that you probably could have fixed earlier if it's off. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna slide my needle off. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that little bead off the ball chain with the wire so that it's flush up against my jump rings and go ahead and knock out any of those little wire fuzzies. Easy peasy so far. So now is the time to grab my four millimeter jump rings and start attaching them. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay. So I got that there and then I've got this here. I'll open up that. I'll start with the side that's that I consider my bottom side first, which is closer to the silver silk chain and not so much the end. And I'll go ahead and fix my jump rings there, attach everything all together. Same thing with this one. I would recommend also opening up your jump rings ahead of time. It'll save you so much time during the construction of this. Okay, so let me fast forward here through the directions. We did that. This is the part that we're at. And we've established this. And now we just gotta do the ends here. Open that up. 
slide it through the two five millimeter jump rings and then close it again. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. And of course I'll need a fifth jump ring to have it attachable to my clasp. So let's see, there go. Here we are with step number nine in our picture. And now the finishing touch is to add our last five, uh, four millimeter jump ring onto the end there. Just like that. And then you can close that right back up. So essentially you'll want to do this to all of the colors. Um, and even if you just did it to the one color and made yourself a bracelet on the go, hey, that's pretty cool, right? And even if you put them on different clasps, you can wear them separately together. Um, there's just another form of versatility, really. I think that would be kind of a fun idea, especially if you did like the hot colors and the cool colors together. And then if you are if you fancy the rainbow like I do, then you could wear them together or you can wear them separately, just depending on what your mood is. Some food for thought there. Uh, let's see. I'm going to first pan through some questions, if there are any, and some comments. Oh, hi, Kelly! Uh, I can't wait to see you in a couple, well, less than a week here, huh? <laughs> we are going to cause some ruckus in the house. I cannot wait. Myself, Kelly, and Jill Wiseman will be together in the same space, doing some beating, doing some, uh, I don't know, probably having a few beverages and cocktails and just catching up on good life. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for us to be together. Um, let's see, Donna has a question. Could you attach all the jump rings and then slide it on? Um, no, you cannot, Donna, because the jump rings are gripping the ball chain core. So unfortunately, unless you got bigger jump rings, uh, then you could probably slide it, but then it wouldn't be stable. So you could do it as an accent uh, if you're trying to do a chainmail bead, perhaps. Could lead to another idea. Um, but you do have to have the the silver silk chain sandwiched inside of the jump rings as you're putting it all together. Oh, Miss Barrel Not Queen, in fact, chimed in and said, if you were making this into a necklace, you could, uh, it would look cool with barrel nuts attached to the fifth jump ring. Ah, I know, right? I immediately thought of leather and barrel knots too. And I think now they just go hand in hand and then automatically my thought just comes straight to you, Kelly. <laughs> uh, you have gotten the barrel knots. Uh, you've got me hooked on the barrel knots and um, it's just, it makes me think of you all the time in the best ways. Um, let's see. Uh, hi, Lorena. It's a uh, good morning to you, Lois. She says, love this design. Thank you. All right. So I don't see any um, question questions, so that's hopefully good. Ah, oh, Teresa actually says, kits are still available in the Silver Silk store. Do you have yours yet? Yes, there are kits to this bracelet in the Silver Silk store. Go to silversilkonline.com and check out the design kits section of the site. All right, guys, let's bring it all together. Here's essentially what we are making on one side. It's a pretty cool little bunching of colors, right? <laughs> this really disco ball sparkly clasp. What is there not to love about this? So I'm just going to go ahead and separate it so that I've got one half clasp attached together. And the other side is what we're going to work on together. All right, first things first is I kind of want to arrange my colors so that they're lined up in an organized and methodical way here. Okay, let's see, I think this is it. And this is the order that I want to do my colors in. It's a little bit different from the picture because it's reversed, but you guys get the idea. Um, all of these have the four millimeter jump rings attached to the end here. And so the idea and how to bring this together is to grab a five millimeter jump ring from your kit or from your stash and to open it up and then start stringing the colors on in order. Okay, so you already have one, no wait, that's right. <laughs> I still can't get my colors right. Uh, that's okay though, we got this. 
And it's going to get a little crazy because it's going to get very bunched up, but that is what having two pliers are, it's great for um, kind of keeping all this organized. So once I do that, I'm just going to close that right back up and boom, that's pretty much it. And all I have to do at this point is just keep an eye on that jump ring that I just attached. I'm going to take a four millimeter jump ring. I am going to attach that directly to my clasp first. This is also a great way, whereas some of these, like this company is so good that the seam of the jump ring is so hard to find. <laughs> and uh, believe it or not, that's a good sign. Let's see if I found it. Oh, I had it covered. Um, this is a great way to add some length to your bracelet if in case you accidentally cut it too short or um, you just wanna make it bigger, you can add some beads to the jump rings or barrel knots or leather or whatever your flavor is um, and extend it out that way. It'll add a little visual interest and it will also um, lengthen, give you a, a longer length of a bracelet to work with here and to wear. All right, to my four millimeter jump ring, I'm gonna attach a five millimeter jump ring as such. And then I'm just going to carefully pick up everything and slide that last jump ring onto my current jump ring and then attach that all together. And I've got this really smart little um, way to end my design as such. I think I actually, oh, you know what? I actually didn't need this extra jump ring at all. You can do that. Um, this, so this is a great example of lengthening your bracelet if you want to. You don't have to have it. Clearly I didn't. So I'm, just, <laughs> I'm gonna fix my boo-boo there and uh, unattach this and just go ahead and get rid of this jump ring that I don't need after all. <laughs> it was hanging out here, so I really didn't know what it was for, um, but now I do. Okay, let's see if I can find it again. There it is. Boom. There we go. All right, there we are. Easy peasy. Just a fun little bracelet, I think. It's just so, so cute to wear. And uh, I'm going to pan one more time through any question. Oh, Kelly says, oh my God, how fun is this project? It's super fun. It's so easy to put together, um, especially. And I think that's my favorite part. And you know what? I've been wanting to do rainbow colors and silver silk for such a long, long time. And I haven't until now. Um, it was just time. It was time that I needed to. It was the the space and energy to do it. And I'm so glad that, it, you know, this kit came along when it did. Part of the reason was also trying to make it economical and cost effective with the amount of, you know, findings that would be involved. And so Chainmail really did simplify everything for this project. Uh, Debbie says, thank you for your tips. You are welcome, my friend. Um, I, I really appreciate giving any advice and tutorials for you guys. Pamela is asking, is there a kit for this? And yes, there absolutely is. You can grow, you, excuse me, <laughs> trying to talk multiple things here. You can go to silversilkonline.com and check out the design kits um, in, the, in the store menu and you will find it there. And uh, this does, I guess, to tack on an extra thing to this, I've got another kit coming out for the Great Beat Extravaganza. Um, I'm switching gears and not doing chain mail but I am going to get you guys hooked on a little bit of seed bead weaving. Um, these are called gem duos. So I'll be releasing information for this design uh, here soon in five different colorways. Pretty excited about this kit. And it's just a new technique that I can teach you guys. Uh, I feel so much in love with chain mail. And um, I just, uh, I wanna share all the passions and different expertise and techniques with you guys as much as possible. All right, so I'm going to pan back to my face here. <laughs> let me, um, well, let me pan back to the picture of this and then my face. <laughs> I truly enjoyed hanging out with you guys. This is always such a pleasure. Um, you guys make these videos so much fun and entertaining for me. And uh, I hope it is for you too. 
If you have any questions, you can email me, orders at silversilkonline.com. If you are wanting to be involved with my shenanigans, you will join the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group. There we share all kinds of things and I give you guys updates on what's behind the scenes, what's going on with, um, with my life and with Silver Silk and just a way, great way to connect and see each other's designs that you use Silver Silk with. Um, I get inspired. I know the Silkies get inspired and we want you to get inspired by joining us. You can follow me on Instagram. Um, there I'm constantly posting daily um, stories that just touch base with some of the other businesses that I work with that use Silver Silk in their projects and kits. Um, it's a great way to get uh, some of the other project ideas out to you guys and just you know keep you in the loop of what's new and great in Silver Silk. Um, and you can also find a giant library of photos within my posts to get more inspiration with. Um, what else? You can join my uh, texting, my little text group, which are, it, it's a first play. I think I've actually got it here that I can probably, oh, so there we go. <laughs> There's a number down there. Um, it'll scroll back around. And uh, these are the first people that know about different projects that's happening in Silver Silk, the different kits, new products that are in the store before it even hits the store um, and the pop-up shop, certainly. So limited edition products. Um, so you can sign up for this texting notification. I don't bug you with text messages. Um, many silkies can attest to this. It's truly just, uh, you know, maybe on average once a week, letting you guys know what's up. Um, what else? I think that's all the different places that all of the new silkies can join in the fun um, and where to find me. So I guess I'll leave you guys hopefully inspired, invigorated, um, just a good start to the weekend and uh, we'll catch you guys again soon. Love all of you. Thank you again for joining me on such short notice and um, you guys always make the magic happen and I'm just here to conduct and, you know, get the music started for us to to listen to and play into i don't know what that analogy was or where it's going <laughs> all right i love all of you so much and i will catch you again soon Mwah! big hugs to you out there bye <laughs>